Hello everyone. In uh, 2017, when Southern decided to develop a new star tracker, so-called uh, Origa, uh, we were not aware that uh, we would be able to produce so many star trackers. We had the first flight heritage in uh, 2019. If I'm not wrong, today we have reached the number of uh, 221 units in orbit and uh, our production last year reached the number of 900 units. This is our new Star Tracker Origa. We are offering two versions of uh, Origa. This is the first one, uh, Origa CP. CP stands for Centralized Processing. So this is the first version that has been proposed in uh, 2019, where we have this optical head which is connected to uh, the processing unit and we do provide our software as well. The second version is Origa SA, the standalone version, in which we have still the same optical head and also we support the uh, electronic unit with the software. So, needless to say that with this configuration, we can operate up to three optical heads at the same time uh, at 5 or 10 Hz. On top of that, we are offering other solutions in order to test the hardware and the software. So, we have many solutions for that. And today, we are going to present you one of the solutions which is proposed by Southern, so-called ADOS. So this is an optical simulator capable to simulate any position of the vault and then it is used to stimulate the star tracker and to test it in different configurations. Everything is uh, provided in a plastic box in that box, uh, you will get uh, smaller boxes containing the different pieces of hardware. So, uh, the first one is for the optical head, the second one for uh, electronic unit, and then uh, the uh, display which is used on uh, ADOS. Then you have to unpack uh, each uh, box. Everything is protected in a double uh, plastic bag. After unpacking everything, you have to remove the first plastic bag. Here we have uh, the optical head, so we are unpacking the electronic unit. And then the last step is for the uh, display of uh, ADOS. Uh, again, this is uh, protected well in order to avoid any contamination. So here we are at the uh, second step. There is another bag uh, with a detector uh, in order to uh, verify that there is no issue with respect to humidity. Uh, before being used, of course, uh, we clean uh, all the items with uh, uh, nitrogen. Then we put everything which is prepared uh, in order to be used in a clean room. The next step is inside the room. Here we are inside. The next step is to remove the second uh, protective uh, plastic bag and uh, we'll see later how to connect them and to operate the Star Tracker with EDIOS connected to a laptop uh, provided, of course, with the EDIOS uh, test equipment. So just be careful to uh, remove everything uh, carefully. The optical head is protected by a red cover. Here, this is the electronic unit. And the last one is the uh, micro display that will be installed uh, on the baffle of uh, Origa CP optical head. Here, everything is unpacked. We just need to plug in the harnesses and then to operate the optical head and the star tracker. This is what we will see just after.
here we have a view of uh, the hardware setup. Just need to uh, plug in uh, everything. The different uh, items on the left hand side you will find the electronic unit, then in the middle the optical head and on the right hand side uh, there is a micro display of uh, ADOs. Here we are connecting the uh, power supply and communication interface with the uh, uh, electronic unit, just one connector, so just be careful about the, uh, the torque to be applied uh, in order to screw the uh, connector on the electronic unit. Here we are connecting the uh, unit with the laptop, power supply, plus 5 volts. Be careful to remove the uh, protective cover, uh, which are on the optical head and the electronic. Just uh, remember that uh, we can connect up to three optical heads with uh, each electronic unit. So in that configuration at the moment, we have only one. So here we have uh, the connector on uh, the optical head side. Very easy to uh, plug in. And then this is the last step where we are going to uh, install the uh, display on the optical head. We have a mechanical bracket here, the black one. Just need to insert that on the optical head. Two screws are used in order to fix the, uh, the bracket on the optical head. And here we are at the very final step of uh, installation. Just need to put on the optical head the uh, micro display. And now we are going to operate the ADOs through the uh, computer. This is the next step of uh, our demo. Here we have the test setup. We have uh, three screens. The one on the left hand side, this is a screen corresponding to EGSC SAT. With that uh, interface, we can uh, control and uh, read, send the telecommand to uh, the electronic unit. Then in the middle, uh, you have a display of what is generated on ADOs. So if you look carefully, you will find some bright points corresponding to the stars that are simulated. On the right hand side, uh, this is a display corresponding to ADOs itself. You can uh, control that part of the software either in a local mode where you have to select the quaternions that you want to simulate and the motion rate as well. And also you can uh, simulate any attitude through the, the control of uh, the EGSE SAT. In that case, the quaternions are generated by EGSE SAT and then sent to the uh, software of ADOs so that you can operate as a star tracker, you do, can do some tests in closed loop configuration. At any step of your integration, you may use either the open loop or also the closed loop. This can be very useful. Here we have uh, the screen which is displayed when you execute the software of ADOs and uh, uh, the EGSC uh, SAT as well. This is a software which is used in order to communicate with the Star Tracker and also with the ADOs. So, in other words, on one channel we are generating uh, the video signal which is used with the ADOs, and on the other channel through the RS422 interface we are capable to communicate and to read the telemetries from the electronic unit. At this step, the star tracker is off. You can see that uh, uh, all the uh, 
uh, indicators are uh, static, there is no information which is displayed. And at the next step, we'll uh, switch on the star tracker by activating the on-off switch on uh, the right and corner. So as you can see at this step, everything, the star tracker is in standby mode and uh, the frame counters are incrementing, but the optical head is not yet switched on. That's why we stay in uh, standby mode. We are going to switch on the optical head number one as it is uh, displayed here and we send the switch on telecommand and when we go back to the main display, the star tracker is still in standby mode. Of course, we can select the telemetries which are sampled uh, when we communicate with the electronic unit. Here we have uh, some information concerning the optical head. So it's uh, ID, uh, calibration uh, ID as well and uh, we have here the FPGA version of uh, the optical head. So now we are going to activate the uh, autonomous acquisition mode and we send the telecommand in order to operate the star tracker. We see uh, during a short period of time, we stay in acquisition. So in other words, we are in full frame acquisition. And then after a few seconds, we switch in uh, tracking mode and we can see uh, the quaternion output changing according to the position of the stars in the field of view. Everything is prepared and is controlled by the software. We can use a local mode as it was at the beginning of this demo, but we can use also the remote mode where the image which is generated by uh, the ADOs can be configured through the Ethernet link. With that, we are able also to simulate a portion of the vault, any portion of the vault, in fact. And we can see that the uh, quaternion output is uh, exactly the same as what we want to simulate. In other words, uh, with a quaternion of 0.5 on uh, all the terms. Here uh, we removed the occultation and uh, we see that uh, the star tracker is capable to have a successful acquisition and then resume the tracking. Just before we have been testing the star tracker when we have occultation of uh, the field of view. Here this view is uh, interesting because uh, uh, we can see the uh, stars which are simulated by ADOs and we can change a feature on the, the ADOs where we can simulate the background level. The display which is on the right is uh, brighter than what we had uh, just previously. Uh, you can hardly see as uh, a stars in the field of view, but in that configuration, we are capable to maintain the tracking with no issue. Tracking is back, amazing. As you can see, uh, with ADOS, uh, we can uh, test the star tracker in many configurations by simulating the background level generated by the stray light. You can simulate also the occultation of uh, the star tracker and the reacquisition just after. And if you don't have that uh, feature for testing the star tracker, you still have the opportunity to test that on your balcony. And this is a picture of uh, what has been done by one of our engineers. In the background, you have a beautiful view of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Maybe you can do the same, why not? Should you need further information concerning Origa Star Tracker and ground support equipment, do not hesitate to contact Sojourn.